recording your own vocals can be pretty frustrating. Do you believe in love after love? Oh crap, this thing fell off. Wait, oh, wait, I gotta hit record. Ah! Especially if you're new to producing your own music. So in this video, I wanna share with you six steps that help you get professional sounding vocals right from your home studio. And one of these steps is going to be a game changer. But before we get to that step, I wanna share a little bit about my struggle when it came to recording my own vocals. You see, I've been producing music for a living now for 21 years, and I've had the privilege to record on a special project in creating music for a video game trailer called Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Now that's me singing on that song. And until that moment, I never felt comfortable with recording my own vocals. I would just cringe when I would hear them back. So what changed? It was until I implied the six steps that I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video that I built the confidence I needed to record my vocals professionally in my own projects. So the first step I wanna talk about is microphone type and room treatment. So I don't wanna focus in on a specific microphone and tell you this is the mic you need to buy and call it a day. Cause it's more about understanding what type of microphone that you're gonna be using and your recording environment plays a huge role in getting the best quality vocal recordings that you can get. So let's talk about room treatment. If you're working out of a bedroom home setup, you don't have to transform your recording environment to a multi-million dollar recording studio just to get good quality vocals. A couple tips can really help you go a long way. So if you're in a small room, it's best that you move your mic away from any walls so that you're not capturing the reflections of your sound from the wall back onto the microphone as well. This gives you a really pingy and boxy type of sound because you're recording a lot of the reflections from the room. If you can, put your microphone and center it to the most center part of the room as possible so that you give some distance from the nearest walls, causing less of that reflection to be captured back onto the microphone. You will get some reflections if your room isn't treated acoustically. So you could either uh, strategically place some sound diffusion and some sound acoustic treatment in certain areas of your room so that you're diffusing any of those reflections and you can actually deaden up the room a little bit. And what I mean by deaden up is that you're causing less of those room reflections to be captured in the microphone. You can also use a vocal shield and there are many different brands and products out there that allow you to deflect any of the reflections of your recording room environment. You don't need to have it 100% dead, that would just be really weird, but you want to cause less of those reflections bouncing from all the different walls, including your ceiling and floor that will be captured in your microphone. Now, some of you actually might have a dedicated space for recording your vocals, such as a walk-in closet, or maybe a medium sized closet, or maybe just a hobbit sized closet, whatever it is. Um, but you can have a dedicated space where you're using things, maybe just as clothes, sheets, whatever you can, just to kind of deaden up the sound so that what you're really focusing in on when you're recording your vocals is just that, your vocals and less of the environment. Which leads us to the type of microphone that we wanna be using when recording vocals. Now, I'm primarily gonna be focusing on two types of microphone, a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone. I'll share with you later which one I primarily use in my studio recordings, but for right now, know that they both have their pros and cons. It all depends on what is it that you need to get accomplished. So, dynamic microphone won't be as sensitive as a condenser microphone, so it gives you a little bit more room to work with, especially if you're gonna be using it to record uh, loud instrumentation, maybe some brass instruments, some drums. If you're gonna be in a live uh, environment, uh, the dynamic microphone would be a great choice for that. Also, from what I mentioned earlier, if you've got a less unforgiving recording environment. Maybe you can't do a lot of remodeling. Maybe you can't do a lot of moving around in your recording environment. Well, then you might wanna think about using a dynamic microphone so that you're not capturing all the nuances of that recording environment. On contrast to the uh, condenser microphone, which is a lot more sensitive and therefore can pick up a lot more nuances of the recording environment, but yet can be much more focused in clarity and in the quality of the vocal recording. So I primarily use a condenser microphone when it comes to recording vocals on my projects because I wanna get the best clarity and the most uh, quality when it comes to recording those vocal takes. So 
it's not which one is right or wrong, it's more of which one would serve you best in light of your current circumstance. Now, step number two is proximity effect. Depending on the distance in relationship to where your microphone is positioned could change the tone and overall vibe of your vocal recordings. For instance, the closer you are to your microphone, the more intimate it might feel and sound, but you're also capturing a lot more low end and bass boost is being captured into the recording. The more further away you are from the microphone, the more of the room environment that you're capturing, the less bass and the more distant that vocal is going to feel. This is not a matter of right or wrong, should you always be in one position when recording your vocals. This is more of a understanding the principle so that you can shape and get the tone and vibe that you're looking for with your vocals. A good rule of thumb or a starting place to be if you wanna know distance wise where to be in relationship to your microphone would be anywhere from like about six to seven inches away from the microphone and you can go ahead and tweak, move around from there. But anything closer to that six or maybe even five inches starts to give you a lot of that low end plosives and things like that. That's why it might be a good idea to incorporate what we call a pop filter, something that will then be in between you and the microphone to take away any of the sibilance and any of the plosives that happen with P's and T's and S's and things like that. So that is also something that would be recommended if you wanted to record your vocals professionally. Now, being able to hear yourself well and the music that you're recording onto clearly is an essential part of getting great sounding vocals, which leads us to step number three, recording levels and direct monitoring. It's important that when you're monitoring that you're not experiencing that what we call latency where you're saying one thing and then you hear it like half a millisecond later. That can cause so much confusion and it also can be very frustrating when you hear this delayed signal. So a couple key things, if you're looking to buy an interface in which you're gonna be using to record your vocals, see if that interface or that uh, sound card can supply any form of direct monitoring. Usually a lot and most all interfaces that are being sold on the market now have direct monitoring included, which means you have the option to hear directly the inputted signal that's going into that audio interface. That makes for less of that latency issue and then it makes a real seamless transition when trying to record vocals directly onto the song that you're working on. And it's very important to also watch the recording levels going into your software. You wanna monitor that by adjusting the gain on your audio interface so that you're not capturing any unwanted distortion or clipping into your recordings. You also don't wanna to record too low of a volume level, so it's all about finding that sweet spot by adjusting the gain on your audio interface. A place that you might want to start at is maybe averaging the volume around, let's say, right above negative 18 or so, and it's okay if the peak, which is the highest point of the volume of your vocal recording, can hover around negative 10. If you're not sure where those are, just take a look at whatever VU metering that you have available in your software before committing to recording, and just rehearse a couple lines of your vocal take and see where you're averaging on the volume. So those first three steps focus more on the recording aspect of recording vocals. And these next couple steps are gonna be very crucial in the vocal production process, such as this next step, vocal comping. Now learning how to comp vocals is a crucial step to professional vocal production. Vocal comping is the process of recording multiple different vocal takes and then finding the best parts of those individual vocal takes and creating one main vocal take. This could be done for the lead vocal, background vocals. Vocal comping is crucial and is being done throughout all of the mainstream popular hits that you can hear today. So we just finished tracking vocals for the song and I wanna go through some of the recording takes that we've done for the lead vocal in the first verse and pick out a combination of takes that will make up the ultimate final take. So. In Ableton Live, I'm gonna hold Option Command U, and now I get to see all the different takes that I've done. Uh, when I hit record and record a pass, it gets saved and it creates its own lane here. So I can audition each one, listen to each individual take, or combine multiple takes by just simply hitting B, drawing in that take. As you can see, it automatically adds it to the top, making it a smooth transition from one section to the next. 
This makes it really easy when I'm comping vocals because then I can just audition, find the parts that I like, and create the take that I want to keep. Now, you might be thinking, why not just record it right the first time and then call it a day? Sure, if you're able to do that, more power to you. But vocal comping can also be a way to express different types of takes, different tones, different characters, all, all different types of vibes. And for recording your own vocals, if you're not that great of a vocalist, such as me, guilty, uh, then vocal comping can be that extra edge to help you find the right takes by just combining the right parts of multiple takes. Here's a pro tip. When comping vocals, it's often easy to get lost in a tunnel vision focus of that one section that you're trying to find a good vocal take for. It's always good that you give yourself a little bit more context of the rest of the song so that it has more of a natural feel going from one section to the next. So keep that in mind when you're comping vocals, so keep the big picture of the whole song at the forefront. Now this next step might be obvious, but it's an essential part of the vocal production process, and that is correcting any vocal tuning and timing. There's nothing more cringe than playing back your vocal only to hear it completely off pitch and off time. <laughs> So what tends to get overlooked in this process is just the amount of time that's dedicated to getting the vocals tuned correctly and adjusting the timing where needed. Now there are many different software and plugins that are out there, both free and that you can purchase that allow you to automatically adjust the tuning of your vocals as well as the timing or manually surgically move the pitch of your vocals to the desired note. This video isn't gonna go in depth on that process. There's many other videos I have that walk you through that on this channel, but this is more so the overview of how important it is to focus and dedicate time into making sure that the tuning and the timing of your vocals are on point. Now here's a helpful tip when it comes to getting the timing and the pitch right with your vocals, especially if you're brand new into this process. Load up a stock instrument in the software you're using to create your music, let's say a stock piano. Now, go ahead and draw or perform the notes of a melody that you're trying to sing and adjust the timing. And most likely because you're using a stock piano, it's already gonna be in tune. So use that as a reference point and a guide when you're tracking your vocals. You can have it playing in your headphones and you're singing right along with that vocal melody uh, that's being played by the piano. And that can help you get more along the lines or in the ballpark of both the timing and the pitch that you're looking for for your vocal performance. Now, remember, I'm coming at this from an angle of not being a vocalist. And so, I, because I don't sing all the time, I'm not the greatest singer, heck, I'm not even a decent singer, I need to probably rely a little bit more on the tuning aspect than I normally would if I was singing all the time. But I also wanna say that tuning shouldn't be a complete substitute for lack of time spent on getting a great take. That's what makes step four so important. When you're comping vocals and you're doing that well, you're able to get the best take possible so that your tuning doesn't have to do that much of the heavy lifting. Now this next and final step was a complete game changer for me when it came to recording my own vocals. And this is something I've picked up throughout the years of working alongside major recording artists, vocalists, and amazing singer songwriters in my productions. And that is having a confidence mindset. Doing things that allow you to get the best performance possible before even hitting the record button. Now this is at the underlining core behind every other step that we've mentioned, which is why I saved it to the last. Things like identifying the right key for your vocal range. Might sound obvious, but believe it or not, tweaking and adjusting the key signature of the song you're working on so that it best suits the vocalist goes a long way. Oftentimes we feel, hey, I'm motivated, I love the key of this beat that I'm making, so then let me just kind of fit my vocal to that. Rather than saying, well, here's the range that I can actually sing with confidence in, this is the lowest note I can sing comf comfortably in, here's the highest note I can sing comfortably in, and I wanna make sure that my melody is in that range and that the song that I'm working on fits that key signature that best suits that vocal range. And that's what I mean by that. And the next thing is the importance of emotion over perfection. What I mean by that is we can adjust the pitch as we covered in our last step. 
We can adjust the timing, but what we can't insert is emotion. We can't insert the attitude, can't insert the angst or the character that really gets the emotive aspect of the song from that vocal performance. So what oftentimes happens, people say, hey, I can fix all the stuff in post or you know, after I've recorded, but then they get lazy and not want to tap into the emotive expression of the vocal, right? Because they think, well, then I'll adjust the pitch and that's fine. Or to the extreme of, I have to worry about always being pitch perfect, always getting the time, and then squeezing the life out of that performance with no emotion in there. So it's a balance. But the reason why it helps build confidence is because you can focus it more on the emotion connection of what you're trying to say or the delivery of vocal, and then allow the other tools that we talked about to help adjust the tuning, the timing, and getting the right takes. But as long as the emotion is there, you're really getting the heart of what you're trying to accomplish with a professional vocal recording. Now, these steps were meant to provide a solid foundation and helping you build the confidence you need in recording your own vocals on your projects. And if you're looking for a more in-depth walkthrough on how to produce your music that you're passionate about making, then I wanna direct your attention to a free video series that I have available at beatacademy.com producer. You can also access that by clicking the link below at beatacademy.com slash producer. And I'd love to send this video series as soon as possible directly to your inbox. Just go ahead and click the link below and access that today. Hey, I hope this was helpful for you. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.